when we make cheese, we're looking at conditions conducive to the growth of bacteria. So the bacteria that grow, we hope is what we want to grow, not what just happened to be around. Because of that, hygiene is of the utmost importance. So we need to be really careful. We use um, sanitising tablets, um, using hypochlorite as our active ingredient um, in there to solve one tablet, two litres of water, contact time of about two minutes. Everything needs to be clean before it goes in. The reason we use this and use the hypochlorite is that um, it is deactivated by contact with organic material. So when it comes in contact with the milk or the cheese, it, it then is deactivated and won't try to kill off the bacteria we're trying to grow. Raw material we're using today is pasteurised, unhomogenised milk. Pasteurised is a heat treatment to destroy all known pathogens in the milk or organisms that can make you sick. Um, Homogenisation is a process where we break down the fat globules so that the cream doesn't rise to the top. So um, when they do it, they put through a tiny little nozzle to break down the fat. It's not the fat size that's the issue for us. The problem for us in cheese making is that the proteins also go through that process and um, the proteins going through that process changes them. The rennet that we try to add doesn't work on that. So um, we're going to add two litres of milk and two litres of milk will make about one camembert. So we're going through the process today of making camembert. Um, two litres of milk, we need to add a little bit of starter. The starter we add is a bit like a, um, a yoghurt. It's a bacterial culture that we put in. The idea with this is the bacteria convert lactose in the milk to lactic acid. That helps to preserve it, it, it produces acid, it's like pickling, so we add that. If we're making camembert, we also add white mold spores, penicillium candidum, we put a little bit of that in. We put the white mold spores in, when they go in, um, they're all through the milk, but when you eat the cheese, you get the cheese, you can only find it on the outside because it needs air to grow. So it doesn't grow inside because it doesn't have air. So do that. Um, next thing we need to add after this is rennet. Rennet is the thing that changes our milk from liquid to solid. It helps us to get water out to preserve the cheese. So we're dehydrating it. We dissolve it, I've put a little bit of water there because we dissolve it in water because we don't want it to locally coagulate. If we don't add water in there, um, we can get some localised coagulation occurring. So we put that in. Within three minutes of adding this, we can start to get changes to the protein in there. So we just need to make sure we don't stir it in more than three minutes and we need to make sure it's well mixed in. Set the timer for half an hour, let it set, and then our next job after that is to cut the curd. We'll have a solid mass, we'll cut the curd to allow moisture to come out. The smaller we cut the curd, the greater the surface area to volume ratio, the more moisture we are taking out of the cheese. So for camemberts, we usually cut about two centimetre cubes, for feta, about one and a half centimetre. For cheddar, about 0.8 of a centimetre cube. So we, we have a, a bigger, smaller process going through. So we've got a curd there. And so we just cut. Cut it that way. And cut it that way. So now, we've cut it that way and that way, we have towers. We just want to make cubes. So we've got the cubes now, and we now, now want to set this again for another half hour. Leave it for half an hour, let the curd firm up. The curd firms up so that when we stir it, we don't break it apart and end up with the way going milky. <coughs> it's really what we need to do. If we break the curd apart, we lose cheese. The next thing we're going to do is we need to stir the curd to get more moisture out. The more we stir, the more moisture we take out. The more moisture we take out, the drier the cheese. The drier the cheese, the longer the shelf life. Do a little bit of stirring of the curd. And the liquid is the whey, the solid is the curd. So we're just trying to separate them up together. More moisture, 
more stirring, more moisture taken out, dry the cheese. Leave that again and leave it for another half hour. Let that all sit. And all this time, while all this is happening, the starter bacteria that are in there are producing more acid and more acid and the curd is becoming more acidic. So all this is happening. While we're getting rid of moisture, we're trying to get a balance between the acidity of the curd and the moisture content of the curd and get the balance right for a particular cheese. Once we've done another stir, it's um, the next half hour, it's time to put the curd into the hoops. So we have hoops like this. We need to put the curd into. The curd will go in there. We've got a couple that we had earlier that are only a couple of hours since these have gone in and you can see already they're quite, still quite firm. There's, you know, and even after just a couple of hours, these cheeses are not falling apart when we take them out, so. One camembert from two litres of milk, approximately, is what you've got. So we've got the curd there and the whey. Oh, well. You see the whey going through and the curd. you see that? And that's already drained that much. You'll see, you know, with it drained, It'll drain even a little bit more, so it'll go down to about half the size over, overnight. And by tomorrow morning, when you're ready to do something with it, it will be about half, that, uh, half the size it was to start off with, and that's about the size you get. Once we've done that, we've put the curd into the hoop and we let it drain, leave it overnight, and the next morning, we are looking at brining the cheese. So we put the cheese into a salt <coughs> solution and leave it there for about 20, 25 minutes. And then you'll take it out, it's got the salt in there, the salt will go all the way through and that will help to preserve the cheese too. But that's something that's happening tomorrow morning. It will come out of the brine and it'll look sort of like that. That's the sort of look you get onto it after about a week. You know, maybe another day or two that'll get wrapped and um, then It'll go, after it's wrapped, it goes in to get matured. And what happens with it, as you can see here, it starts to go soft on the outside. So the mould spores um, so from the outside soften the inside of the cheese. And you can see it starting to soften. And the longer you leave it, it'll go softer. And it, this softening is protein being broken down and the more protein gets broken down, the softer it gets. Once it's like that, it's really a matter of when you want to taste, when you want to eat it, you know. This could be three weeks old, but you could leave it another two or three weeks if you want it stronger in flavour, or you do it in a shorter time if you wanted it milder in flavour. If we're making a hard cheese, we'd cut smaller, we'd stir a lot more, you know, and we'd apply heat to it to get rid of more moisture. Soft cheeses, we're not stirring as much. Hard cheeses, we're stirring more.